We're going to call the distance from the water heater into the top of the manifold 5 feet. Is that fair? That's the closest I can practically do it in almost every situation. I have seen 30 feet. I've seen 17 feet. I've seen 50 feet. I'll give you a clue. Long distances are bad choices. <laughs> right? Volume grows. So what do we have here? We have 5 feet there. What's the diameter of the inside of the manifold? Mm -mm. One and a quarter. Yours, right? One, this is one. Right? Yours is one. That one's one and a quarter. It's a bigger diameter. That turns out to be a good idea, but you've got to count the volume. So we're going to say there's another, oh, at least one cup in the real manifold here. Probably closer to two. Call it two cups. Seven cups before we leave the manifold and come on a twig. Uh, let's see. I need another volunteer. One more? Come on. It's okay. One more volunteer. I want you to start at this wall, right over here, and run me a twig to the last fixture. Okay? You need help. One of you has to hold, one of you has to pull. Okay? Now, I have a question for you. Are you going to run diagonally? Anybody ever gone to their attic and figured out that the wires go every which way and you can't figure out what to do? I want you to follow the building elements. It's easier to figure out how to build, inspect, and service. And I'm going to show you in a minute that it doesn't really matter for distance much. It makes a difference. So go ahead and make an elbow. Go ahead, put it down. That's good. We're following the same basic path. Go ahead, I'll stand there. Oops. We're going to have to splice this line. All right, there you go. I'll stand on it. Go for it and go to the, the shower head, right there, right where the four is. All right, now let's count feet. How many feet is this? Remember it was 40 feet to get out here before, plus the twig length of 10 feet, right? So that's 50 feet, plus another five feet, because you got to get from there up into the attic. So we have 50 feet on the twig, and we have another, and that's, that's how many cups? That's 10 cups, right? What is it here? We've got another seven cups. 17 cups in this case. How many cups did we have to get to the last fixture there? We had 40 feet of, half inch, of three quarter inch pipe. That's 16 cups. We have two cups in the twig. It was 18 cups. Fair enough? We had four per cup. So it was 17 cups, 18 cups in the first case. So now it's 20 cups plus. It, it, no, this is half inch pipe now. I just switched because it's a twig, right? Twigs are half inch in this case. They would be, right? We're at that balance point. You shouldn't use 3 eighths anyway. So half inch is what it would be. And so that's 5 feet per cup. It's 10 plus 7 is 17. This was one cup worse in the trunk and branch case than it is there. Now, I want to have hot water at this shower. What would you have to do with this system? Got to run another pipe all the way back to the, to the manifold. Go ahead, I'll hold. Go close to the other one, right? There you go. I'll stand. Go ahead. How many feet is that twig going to be? 50 feet. So how many cups to get hot water at the second draw out here? Well, where's the hot water? It's in the manifold. So I've got 10 cups. In the trunk and branch case, the first one, how many cups to get to the second draw? Two cups. It's already hot in the trunk line, right? Does anybody here have a morning rush hour pattern? Ever be up and out of the house an hour, hour and a half? Right? What if we insulated the pipe? By the time you got from the, the master bath, bath, bathroom to the kitchen to prepare breakfast, the water would still be hot back there, wouldn't it? Turns out that insulation doubles to triples the cool down time in the pipe. 
It doubles it in half inch and triples it in, in, in three quarter inch. Even better in one inch and bigger. So which system is going to be more water efficient? Trunk and branch or central core manifold? Trunk and branch. Which one is going to be more time efficient? Trunk and branch. Which one's going to be more energy efficient? Trunk and branch. Because you've got to count the following. The volume in these two pipes is now bigger than the total volume you had in the trunk and branch case. Okay? It's a real problem to talk about efficiencies. We haven't put the other two pipes out here, nor the ones in the kitchen or anything else. If you want hot water in the trunk and branch case, where's hot water right after you take your shower? It's right here. Where's hot water in the manifold case? Back at the manifold. The smaller the house, the more manifolds look smart. The bigger the house, the less, less smart they look. Trunk and branch looks pretty good. Return systems operating on demand look better than either one. Okay? So, give everybody a big hand. We went to dinner one night. I was telling the folks from Upanor that Upanor was at the first meeting where we asked our, ourselves the challenge. And we decided to go to dinner, and we asked ourselves over dinner what would be the solutions to this problem of hot, the challenge of delivering hot water within a cup. At dinner, we found four options. About six months later, I was in an ASPE convention, and someone came up with the fifth. That was five years ago. We haven't found a new one since. I'm still looking. If you find a new one, I'm interested in hearing about it. Okay. So, central core plumbing. What do you think the odds of this are? We're going to get all builders of all new homes to build houses so that all hot water fixtures are within one cup of one water heater. What do you think? Slim to none? Okay. It's tough to do. By the way, one cup is really tough. You, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to call the water heater manufacturers and tell them that for the storage type, tank type water heaters, we'd like 12 holes in the top. They'll do it. Just costs a lot of money, right? It's not easy to do. Um, I don't think it's happening. Okay, but that's certainly one of the options: is to build all buildings with a tight plumbing core. I think that would be an interesting architectural challenge, don't you? Give that to every design class for one of the things they got to figure out how to make happen. How about one water heater for every hot water fixture? What do you think? Anybody here a plumber? Like to install lots of water heaters? How many here have a water heater at home? How many maintain the water heater drum? Keep your hands up. What if you have two, three, four? No, how many do you have? One. What do you think the odds of people, remember, we're not, dis, not unrepresentative of the rest of the population. What do you think the odds of maintaining two or three or four water heaters in a house are? Very slim, right? All right, so I actually think we've got a difficult problem of future maintenance, but it doesn't going to get that far. Water heaters take up space, don't they? They also have to be, energy has to be brought to the water heater, doesn't it? So here's our typical house, right? Where's the gas line going to come in or the electrical panel? Over the street there, over somewhere, right? Street's over there. So it's going to come in over there somewhere, and I've got to bring power over to this bathroom group. First question, where am I going to put the water heater? Houston, we'll put it in the attic, right? Houston, we have a problem. All right. How many want to use a tankless water heater? How many want to do that? Okay, where are we going to put that? On the outside wall? Some parts of the country we might do that. Where are we going to put, where's the water heater space? They take physical space, but let's count the following. In relative terms, which is least expensive? Running a foot of pipe for hot water, or running a foot of gas line, or running a foot of 220 electrical? You got to run one or the other to get hot water out here. Pipe is cheap. Inexpensive, let's use the right term, right? Compared to those, it's inexpensive. And I just think that people are going to go with the less expensive installed option within reason. This is a small house, by the way. The plumbing core in this house is pretty tight. But imagine it was 70 or 80 feet, which we see in some bigger homes, don't we? In your house, it's almost 80 feet of pipe from the water heater to the furthest fixture, isn't it? Follow the way the pipe got there. Good answer. <laughs>